It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Let us do what? Offer? Sacrifice of praise to God how often? Continually. Continually. So that means a continual confession, declaration, and he says you're giving thanks to God, and he says giving thanks unto him, Amen. And the words giving thanks, same two words, same word as profession or confession. Same identical Greek word. Actually, some translations even say confessing to his name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Amen. My, my wife, she, um, she, she acts a lot and praise a lot because she hung out with my mom. So I brought Trina home and she met my mom. My mom's like an early morning prayer. And she gets up every morning and she puts on a pink robe, you know, kind of a thick one. And she goes and sits in her chair, gets a little coffee or uh, what, oatmeal or something, sits it beside her, got her Bible open on her lap. And she goes over the scriptures. Come on, I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. Come on, he that dwells in the secret place. That's one place that will change your life. And you don't even need a ticket to get there. Come on, you just come by that blood. They forgot to put that in a hundred places that will change your life. So, hallelujah. So mom would go over there. My mom, and of course, uh, in the morning, she had kind of a lower voice. My mom, you know, she, oh, and she's on, she's gone. And she goes over scripture confession. Amen. Then, then she, goes, she says, praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Go back over and confess. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, you don't even have to know Greek to do that. You know, you could actually get saved in English. I said, you could be healed in English. You don't have to know Hebrew, homebrew, shebrew, or none of the other brews. Come on. Some people say, well, I know the Hebrew and the Greek. And I said, but looking at you, I don't think I want to learn it. Listen, now. Come on, I believe the English is enough to put the devil on the run. If you just know the English. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, preacher, a preacher, <laughs> I was preaching on uh, rejoice, you know, in Philippians 16 times it says rejoice. And he said, uh, now, now I wonder what he's trying to tell us there in Philippians. I said, he said 16 times to rejoice. He said, well, what is the Greek word? I said, you ain't doing the English word yet. Don't worry about the Greek word. Come on, look at somebody and say, you ain't doing the English word yet. Why ain't trying to figure out the Greek word? You ain't doing the English word. <laughs> Come on, the devil can even understand redneck, man. Just speak it out. Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, by him, <laughs> praise the Lord. Listen, listen if, this, if this don't help your faith and help you release your faith, I don't know what you're going to do at the house by yourself. Come on, because this is your support group here. And if, if this don't help you release your faith, amen. In other words, your faith must be released in words, and in actions. Yes. Yes. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So by him, or in Christ, by him, let us do what? Offer the sacrifice of praise to God. How often? Continually. Praise the Lord. Now, I was reading Lester Summerall's 
uh, book on pioneers of faith. And he was, he was personal friends with Smith Wigglesworth. And uh, I love Smith Wigglesworth. You know, it's quotes by him on faith and on who you are, the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, working in you. So, um, he, uh, w- <laughs> Summerall said, he asked Smith Wigglesworth, uh, uh, what do you do on a daily basis? You know, anybody raised 24 people from the dead, you're like, eh, come on, you start out with like special K, or you do like Cheerios. <laughs> Was it oatmeal? Surely it's not donuts, but anyway. So, so how do you start off your day so you won't know the secrets, you know, raising 24 people from the dead? How do you start off your day? Now listen to this, because this blew my mind. He said, what the word said, I get up every morning and I dance before the Lord for 14 minutes, high speed dancing. (laughs) Then I sit down and read my Bible for an hour. (laughs) Then I pray for an hour. I thought, well, that's kind of a shock, isn't it? First thing you do when you get up in the morning, dance for the Lord for 14 minutes, high speed. You're like, could we start off with like low speed or something like (laughs) that? High speed. Come on, I'll tell people if you can't dance, you can scoot, right? So I say, all right, all right. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come on. Jesus was not just barely raised from the dead. Come on, he didn't just kind of get up and go, I'm alive. I'm alive again. Now that was hell what I just went through. That was hell. But I, I'm alive again. Has anybody got an aspirin? <laughs> Come on. Jesus wasn't just barely raised from the dead. Come on. When he's raised from the dead, he said, What? I am he that liveth. brings me into agreement with everything he did. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So your identification with Christ, same identical life, same identical power, is activated by your identical confession. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you can high speed dance for 14 minutes or not. I can tell by looking at some of y'all. <laughs> hey, you can't even get happy in Bible school. I don't know what you're going to do at the house when you get up in the morning. Look in the mirror and see what the rest of us are going to have to look at. Listen. But you, you're going to live by faith. Come on now. Come on. Faith ain't normal. Faith ain't the normal way people live. If you're going to live by faith. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, I started trying it. You know, I thought, well, Wigglesworth did it. I mean, Lord have mercy. <laughs> and you know, like... Uh, you have a personality problem if you're embarrassed for yourself. <laughs> Come on, too self-conscious. Yeah. Come on, faith makes you God-conscious, not yeah. self-conscious. Yeah. So I kind of jump around the room a little bit, praise the Lord, and I go, two minutes. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Whoa, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. <laughs> I'm going to have to get in shape to do this. Now, (laughs) praise the Lord. Amen. I I saw so many facets of that joy, yet believe and you rejoice. Amen. 
I thought, the psalmist David said, Lord, I rejoice because of your mercy. Now, you got at least a hundred things you ought to be rejoicing about. But when you know the mercy of God, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. I will rejoice because of your mercy. Come on now. Where would you be? What could have happened to you if it were not for the mercies of God? Amen. The goodness of God. I rejoice because of your mercy. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness. <laughs> Come on, don't act like you got here because you deserved it. Come on now. It's the mercy of God, the faithfulness of God. Great is His faithfulness. Amen? So your confession, and now it's connected to your praise. Giving thanks. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the Lord told me one time, because you're a pastor, you know, he said, you cannot cure everybody's unthankfulness, but you can cure yours. How many ever tried to cure other people's unthankfulness? You're like, I'm telling you, you're a problem right now. You're the most unthankful person I've ever met. I mean, ever do something for people that is so unthankful? You just can't ever do enough. And if you ever stop, they like blame you for everything else in their life. Listen. <laughs> hey, man, I was out eating in a restaurant in Tulsa, and, and uh, the waitress found out it was a Raymond student. So I, I gave her a $100 tip before the meal ever started. I gave her a $100 bill, and she was like, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I said, you are so thankful that I just gave her another hunter. She started crying, thank you, thank you. I said, I've never made anybody as thankful as you are, so I gave her another hunter. And I asked some other pastor, I said, all of y'all give her some money. That's the most thankful person I ever met in my life. So they ended up giving her, what was it, $870 tip. Imagine what would happen if you would be thankful. Come on, by him, therefore. <laughs> I said, by him, therefore, let's offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Amen. So that's a part of your confession. Amen. That's a part of your confession life is giving thanks. All right, go to 1 Timothy 6, 12. Praise the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight. Now, I love this scripture just because it starts off with fight. Because <laughs> I'm a middle child, you know. And if there wasn't a fight going on, I'd start one. So I always had a fight going on with my older brother or my younger brother all the time, the neighbor's kids. So, fight. Fight. So, if you don't like to fight, you're not going to enjoy Living by faith. Come on, if you're just passive, I said, if you're just passive and you just let everything run over you, come on, you're just going to have to live by your mountain. But if you have faith, you're going to move your mountain. Praise the Lord. First Timothy 6, 12, fight, 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 fight. Fight, 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 fight. So what do you think the Lord's trying to tell you? There's going to be a fight. <laughs> there is going to be a fight. Amen. Now, you heard my story probably about Abraham Lincoln that uh, grew up out, you know, in the country. And uh, in the country, that little community he lived in, there's a, a guy that had a little dog that whipped all the big dogs. Now, if you live in the country, you know it's important to have a good dog. Amen. And you don't want the neighbor's dog coming over and whooping your dog. So you better keep him in the house or you better get, teach him a few lessons. <laughs> I live a little bit out in the country. 
So I got a Sharpay. You know what Sharpay? Sharpay was actually a Chinese dog that was bred to fight. He was bred to fight. So Sharpay's got all that skin, you know, which make them so cute and everything. But some of them have a real attitude. The first one I had was kind of a nice Sharpay. The last one, he was like, I'm going to tear you up if you come in my yard. I was like, he's a rough dog here. So they got all that skin so that if, a, if another dog grabs him by the neck, which is a chokehold, he ain't getting nothing but skin. And the skin is loose enough that after he grabs him, skin will come out and then he can come around and bite him. So you have been bred to fight. Come up, the devil gets a hold of you say, you got me? You sure you got me? Rah! So you guys, all right. Are you sure you got me now? Oh, but let me tell you about Jesus. Amen. Let me make my confession of faith. Amen. So Abraham Lincoln, they asked the guy, says, you know, how come your little dog can whip all the big dogs? And he said, the guy said, um, he said, because your big dog ain't ready to fight until the fight's half over. He said, but my little dog stays mad. In other words, the little dog had attitude all the time. He's just like. And there's some believers, they ain't ready to fight till the fight's half over. When you have a spirit of faith, you stay mad. You're like, I'm mad right now. <laughs> In other words, I got an attitude right now. In other words, not just for what the enemy's doing in my life, come on, but in my community, in my neighborhood, come on, and I got an attitude about it that Jesus is greater and the gospel is greater and I'm here to change things. Praise the Lord. Amen. So my favorite, I guess, is uh, David, David's mighty men. Right? And it says, one of them fought over the field of beans. I read that and said, he fought over the field of beans. Everybody else ran off. And he stayed in the field of beans. Um, fought till the sword stuck in his hand. Because he wasn't going to let the enemy have his beans. I said, well, Lord, I don't know. Why would he have to stay there and fight over them beans? I think I'd just run with everybody else. The Lord said, no, he fought over the beans. Because if you let the enemy have your beans, he's coming after your taco, your burrito, and your whole Mexican dinner. <laughs> he ain't stopping with your beans. Nope. Come on, tacos next, burritos next, your Mexican dinner's next. In other words, you got to say, I got an attitude to fight right here. Devil, you ain't getting my beans. No. You're not getting my joy. You're not getting my peace. You ain't getting my money. Come on now. You ain't getting my health. Amen. By the blood of Jesus, fight! Fight! Praise the Lord! Amen. <laughs> Sometimes I deal with somebody that's in a critical condition. Doctor says you're only going to live a few days. So I come up there, the hospital. So uh, said, "Well, uh, they're asleep right now. They need their rest." I said, "You know they're going to get plenty of rest." <laughs> In the next three days, they're going to have eternal rest if you don't let me in that room. <laughs> Y'all still here? I need my rest. Come on now. You might need somebody to stir you up. Things ain't going to get better just because you slept for an hour. All right, let's keep going. Praise the Lord. <laughs> when you're going to resist the devil. I used to have a staff member years ago. I'm, I'm much nicer now than I was then. Every time we get together and have work to do, you know, he'd say, I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling sick in my stomach. I said, let me tell you something. You ain't going home. 
You pull that trick every time, and we got something to do, and you get sick of your stomach, we have to do all the work. Yeah. So let me tell you what you do. You get sick of your stomach, step out the door and throw up and come back in here and get to work. I said I'm much nicer now than I was then. In other words, everybody pulls that little trick. Come on, when are you going to fight the good fight of faith? Come on. Y'all pray for me right now to stretch out your hand. Fight. Come on, you have to fight for your marriage. I said, you got to fight for your kids. You got to fight for your family. You got to fight for your future. You got to fight for your destiny. You got to fight for your nation. You got to fight. Come on, there's a fight going on here. Come on, let's get ready to fight. So you're not in a people fight, but it's still a fight. Amen. And so the fight of faith, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Boy, I like that. Still a fight. He calls it a good fight. He calls it a faith fight. Praise the Lord. Come on, every good fighter learns from examples and other good fighters. Amen. Amen. So Paul says, let me show you how to fight. Praise the Lord. So sometimes you just got to stir yourself up. Say, I'm ready to fight. Come on, for your destiny, for your future. Abraham Lincoln said, the fight of today is not altogether for today, but for a bright future. All right, let's try that again. I said, the fight of today is not just about today. But it's about your future. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he, he calls it a fight, the good fight of faith. And then when he says, lay hold on eternal life, I don't believe he's just talking about someday you can go to heaven. I believe he's talking about eternal life is the quality of life that comes to every believer. In other words, it contains the love of God and joy and peace, the quality of life. Amen. So he says, lay hold on the life of God. And you've been called to that, and you have what? Professed a good profession among what? Many witnesses. In other words, you've got a good confession, good confession, and many people have heard you make that confession. watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. There is a tremendous power in the positive confession of who Christ is, what he has done, and what he is doing for us right now at the right hand of God. Your faith will never rise above the level of your confession. Satan trembles when you open the word, but he runs when you speak the word. Your confession of faith brings you into a consciousness of who you are in Christ. The Word of God was spoken before it was written, and it was written so it could be spoken. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you are connected to Jesus' victory. There is a miracle in your mouth. Turn your faith loose today by believing and speaking God's Word. For your offering of any amount, we will send you Mark's new book, The Great Confession. In this book, you will learn the power of a positive confession of the blood of Jesus, who you are in Christ, and the power of speaking God's word. Believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. Get ready to overcome adversity and watch the mountains in your life move. You'll also receive the brand new three CD set, The Great Confession. In these messages, you will learn the importance of holding fast to your positive confession of faith. You can also listen to these messages for free on the Mark Hankins Ministry app. 
Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your offering will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministry Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. For your gift of any amount, you will receive a three CD set and Pastor Mark Hankins new book, The Great Confession. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today and I hope that it was a blessing to you. I know that this message is so powerful, life-changing and life-giving, and I'm so glad that you got to hear it today. Something that is very exciting is my dad came out with a brand new book called The Great Confession. Let me read you a quote from this book by F.F. F. Bosworth. It says, nothing will establish and build your faith as quickly as the confession of who you are and what you have in Christ. Okay, listen to this, confession precedes possession. It is so important that we speak and proclaim and declare the Word of God over our lives. It's not just enough to, to hear the Word. It's not just enough to look at the Word. It's not just enough to be around the Word. But once you get the Word in your mouth, that's when things begin to change. The good news is we want to get this book to you free of cost, but any amount of gift that you want to do, if you want to contribute any amount, we want to get this book to you in your hands because we know it is going to change your life. So you can call the number on the screen or go to markhankins.org. You can also go on the app and we will send you this book for free. We hope you have a wonderful day. Be blessed. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. I'll see you next time. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Thank you for watching.